I'm Mishima Yuki, and you're listening to the Giant Sword Podcast, home of the second biggest group of phantom thieves ever. The first being me, Kek. Hello, and welcome to this week's Giant Sword Podcast. I'm your party leader, Nick. Joining me, as always, is Taylor Hoyt. Taylor! What's up, Nick? Good to be back. Yeah, it's been a little uh, three months, you know, having a very a short big... break. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That one month turned into two months. Uh, and we're also, we have a very special guest, Connors, joining us for the first time in uh, 100 episodes, probably. Yeah, actually, it is 100 episodes. The no last, way. I think the last time you were on the, the podcast was our live 50th episode. Oh, my gosh. How far we've come, dude. It's good to be back. <laughs> yeah. We've all grown a little older, a little wiser. <laughs> Great to see you guys. Gray's hairs are starting to poke in. I know. Oh, yeah, dude. It's a good thing you can't see the close up on my beard here. That's a bad sign. <laughs> uh, well, before we start catching up, let me let, let us go check out our sponsors real quick, and we'll be right back. Not doing a sponsor read today. Today, I'll be reintroducing our Patreon. Uh, I've, I haven't really been you know, advertising this much, but if you want to help us out and subs- and uh, like what we're doing and want to support us, Patreon is the best way to do so. Um, just subscribing there would help us out greatly. Um, it would um, supply some funds for our hosting and st- stuff like that. All the back, you know, back end stuff. Um, also, if you don't want to use Patreon, we have Subscribestar as well. So if you want to um, support us that way, that's fine as well. Uh, also, you join our Discord to join our community. That's where our main hub of community is, is in that Discord. Uh, we have a lot of fun there. I'm going to be starting, since this new episode is out, I'm going to do start doing new things like JRPG nights, uh, community game nights, and stuff like that. Uh, also, we're going to be relaunching our Twitch channel. Um, soon, I'll be doing a live show for giant sword podcast it's going to be a little different than these podcasts and yeah so all the links for all these sites are going to be down below and yeah i hope to see you guys there hello and welcome back guys it's been an honor playing with you guys for all my life but now we're going to end this episode we're going to end the series with this episode is that so? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> we, oh, wait, oh, nice to me. Yeah, we are <laughs> on. Funny. We are on. You're telling me now. <laughs> we are <laughs> on <laughs> the brink of a brand new JRPG, Tales of Arise. Uh, someone here has been playing it. And uh, yeah, a little bastard. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to have the credentials, eh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Play your cards right, you'll get one too, right? Hey yo. Yeah, hopefully. Someday, right? Um mm-hmm. but uh Taylor, give us one uh give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down based on what your thoughts are. Sweet. <laughs> All right. Pretty <laughs> you know, tepid thumbs up, but a thumbs up nonetheless. Hey, that's actually I was doing the Zangi from the Street Fighter movie. <laughs> That is actually very high, oh wrong one. That's very high praise from Taylor because Taylor has a iffy relationship with Tales games. Yeah, no, it's I do, and uh, I really enjoyed this one. It's it's real good. It's very. I, I I was we've been joking that I'm like oh I really like it. So that means Nick's gonna that means Nick's gonna hate it. So. <laughs> I'm very curious to hear what you think when you start playing it, Nick. Well, I mean, I played the demo and I liked it. It was fun. Oh, okay. Okay, so. good. Well, it would just be too perfect if, uh, you know, Taylor is like, you know, I think this is finally the right step in the right direction for the Tales series. And Nick is like, well, that's it, guys. We had a good run. We had a couple good games in there, but now it's dead. The worst that's game over. of all time. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, uh, I was worried a little bit there. But then the the demo showed off that it had uh, skits and a lot of character interaction, maybe a little too much character interaction 
in the battle sis, battle battles. Oh but, my god, there's just so much noise during the battles. Yeah, like everybody's yelling their moves and and oh, and then yeah. like, oh hey, I need healing. Oh, the, shut up. Uh, you know, like it's just super flying dragon meteor kick. Oh. Yeah, exactly. There's just <laughs> constant banter, and yeah. I know so many people have asked if there's a way to turn that off. I think the only way to turn it off is if you turn the voice acting off. So probably not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, well, it just takes me back to like I think it was Mega Man Eight. It was like the first PS1 proper like regular old Mega Man game, and every time he would jump, he'd go ha, and it's just like, all right, this is gonna get annoying real quick. Uh, uh, yep. Yeah, exactly. You do the quick jumps. <laughs> <laughs> just like, all right. Doesn't he go like charge or zero? Does it? Doesn't he go like charge shot when he does a charge shot? Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. It's the voice of like a seven-year-old girl, <laughs> naturally. Pretty much. Imagine if he was voiced by Doctor Wiley. <laughs> oh no, the terrible and the failure is Doctor Wiley. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny that they gave Doctor White that voice. But, uh, you, I you, know, I don't get it. <laughs> you know, you know for a fact that it is like, talk to is like, hey Steve from accounting, come here, we need you the voice act. <laughs> yeah, we're short one guy. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me if they just had people, whoever was willing, to yeah. do it at the time, or who's whoever was halfway serviceable. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Anyways, of uh, throwing us off the path. No, no, that's perfect. This is great. Um, Taylor's been playing Tales of Arise, and Connor, um, you, uh, looks like you uh, changed rooms a little bit. Oh yeah, man. I ended up. Uh, Moving out of the old homestead and getting a new place here in San Jose. So, pretty oh, stoked nice. on that. Living with one of my best buddies, having a great time. Nick, you visited, uh, saw the facilities, gave you the tour. Yep. So nice. It's nice to have a new man cave, you know, a new uh, stronghold. And yeah, I'm loving it. Without, uh, I, know, I don't know if you care not to divulge, but generally, where is where is it at? Oh, where so in San you, Jose? If you remember where the old Harry Softbrow was, it was it's like two blocks from there. Oh, over there. Okay, it's kind of off Stevens Creek over there. So anyone who has okay. to, anyone who wants to cut my head off is gonna have to put that in Google Maps and do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck spelling Hofbrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if you if you guys know about that one prank where Shia LaBeouf kept having like a live stream of like a. He will not divide us. Thing or whatever, and people kept uh, people kept triangulating the position of where it was. Yep. Somehow using just like the sky and what planes were passing by at what times, and they found the location of like his super secret art stream and just kept like trolling it savagely. Just like one of my favorite things on the internet. Just like, just can't <laughs> wait. No one is allowed to have fun now without someone having more fun by ruining your fun. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. For good or for ill. Anyways. You could you can watch the entire history. Just uh, the internet internet historian has a whole like series on it. It's great. Oh hell yeah! So Taylor, if you don't know what that is, you can watch it. You'll laugh your ass off. I'll, I'll have to look that up. That sounds interesting. Shia LaBeouf, after the Transformers, he just he turned into a real interesting guy, <laughs> and I mean that both uh, positively and negatively. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Usually when people say "real interesting guy" with like that tone of voice, it's like there's there's some subtext there that's uh, yeah, it's not being said. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real interesting piece of shit. Yeah. But no, anyways, <laughs> just kidding. But um, where, where were we? No, I'm just, not, <laughs> just catching up because we haven't talked to each other in a long time. Okay. Um, the I, I I've actually been doing something really cool. Uh, I decided because I I've been I was sick of constantly putting my consoles here and there and everywhere that I decided to just fully digitize my entire um library and i started using emulators and i f found out how wonderful emulators are mm. oh my pirate no. he's sailing the open seas <laughs> didn't i just say i digitized my own library yeah i do like nope. that that is a nice yeah. element yeah but um so by the way this is an awesome project that you're doing and your your expertise with these kind of things never fails to amaze me but uh, and thanks for giving me, uh, no, for not giving me your emulator library. Thanks for, I asked and you respectfully refused, wink, wink. 
Wink. For anyone who's listening. Yeah. Um, but no, it's a really cool project you're doing, man. And, I, uh, I, I gave you your library. Right, exactly. Thanks for doing that for me. So are you going to learn how to do any other, like, PS3 or maybe any other kind of ones besides PS1 and 2? Uh, well, I have PS3. It just, it just doesn't work that well. Uh, I want... Um, I don't think my computer is strong enough because it keeps freezing in the middle of it, in the middle of playing. Uh, but I am able to play the games, but they're just not. They don't. They're as. They're pretty buggy, you know. Yeah, that sucks, man. Yeah. So it's a little, it needs a little more. The emulator needs a little more uh, time in the oven, but it'll get there someday. I dig it. That cell processor, it's tricky. <laughs> yeah, my computer. You need to have like a freaking Ryzen. Uh, CPU to freaking run this thing. It's ridiculous. Really? It's a, wow. It's a very that seems uh, less than ideal. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a strong processor. It's just it's crazy. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, ever since I've been doing this project, I've just been wanting to play all the games that I have because there's so, it's just like it's just not a hassle to play them anymore. So it's like, mm. ooh, I want to play this, and I just click a couple buttons, start playing, and like, oh, I want to play this one. Oh, I want to play this one. So I've been delving into my uh, JRPG library. And uh, I got I got stuck with well I started playing Tales of Destiny remake you know the game I always talk about on this for the thirty uh, seventh time no I'm actually playing it for the first time in English and that's super fun but I've only been playing it like on stream so when I'm off stream I've been playing two games I've been playing Vandal Hearts two mm. which is a strategy RPG and then is that the one where the blood sprays everywhere that's in Vandal Hearts one. Uh, it's kind of ridiculous how much blood sprays, but Vandal Hearts 2 does have the blood spray, but it's not like as ridiculous. It's not a like Kill Bill style where it's like a geyser. Yeah. <laughs> even the even like the rock golem spray blood like that. It's like okay, it makes sense. Have you seen that by the way, Connor? Have you seen what that looks like? I have not, but I'm incredibly interested. It sounds hilarious. It's literally like when you kill a guy, they like it yell out this like blood curdling scream and then just blood just gushes from your body <laughs> that reminds me of like old diablo one where like the death animations were so goddamn violent dude in the best way that guy with the head would fall off and like topples over and blood splats everywhere it's like hell yeah dude i just shot yeah. you with an arrow in the chest but okay uh, yeah so every death animation <laughs> every death has that blood splurt even if they don't die so it's like Blood splurts everywhere, and then he's like, "No, don't help me! Don't kill me! Don't kill me! I'll surrender." It's like, okay, you just bled all that blood, and you're still alive. Okay, I get it. All right, all right, dude. <laughs> uh, and then the second game I've been playing is Tales of Destiny Two, obviously known as Tales of Eternia on the PS One. So that's been fun. Been uh, digging that. I played that a lot on the PSP, but now to play the original PS One versions. It's, it's nice, nice. Yeah, I definitely want to play Tales of Destiny 2 because obviously the first one is an all-timer. I think I've beaten the first one like two, three times at this point, which is crazy to think about. Um, I, let, I let you borrow I never, beat, I never beat any other Tales game, though. It's hard to get into. Well, I got uh, really far in Abyss, and then something happened. I think, you know, I don't remember exactly what. Oh, no, my PSP got stolen. Oh, man. What about oh, that sucks. <laughs> Teen, teen, teenage, teenage years get in the way. I know that feeling. Young adulthood. Yeah. For sure, man. No, Tales of the Abyss is really good, but I, I, actually, I should play that again. That's a damn good game. It is. It's fun. Um, what's it? Tales of Destiny 2. I gave. Uh, I think I did give it to you, and you tried it out. The th one thing that you didn't like was the really bad voice acting, where he's like, oh, Son yeah, this Sonic is Chaos. Hey, yeah. it's like really monotone. Like it's fine to have terrible voice acting, but it's just tough when they just like really are throwing it in your face, you know? Yeah. Inescapable. I do have. I just get over it, though. Honestly, I know it's a good game. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Uh, I also got the Lunar and Lunar Two, so. Very nice. Good. Finally gonna get that going, cause you know, Lady Luck be kind, right? Yeah. Anyone Lady can... Luck be kind. <laughs> Still, his pronunciation of that line reading defies description. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love it. Play the game to find out. It's a little inside baseball there. Yep. Mm -hmm. But uh, for anyone who can tolerate like eight bit RPGs, like Lunar Two is an absolute like you're screwing up if you haven't played it for sure. See, I loaded up Lunar One 
and then I didn't realize how like how low quality, like super NES quality the the graphics were, and I was like, yeah. oh, wow, they're more they're it's they're crappy, yeah, yeah they're worse than yeah. Tales of Destiny. I was like, holy crap! Like but, Lunar Two is still eight bit, but it's like a massive upgrade, like in a lot of ways, just like sharpness and UI and everything like that. And plus, I remember just the dialogue and the script in Lunar 2 being a lot, like, more engaging to me. Like, the first one definitely feels, like, um, very, like, rescue the love interest, go kill the bad guy in the evil castle. Like, just very formulaic, like, classic, which is fine, because it's, like, an older game. But I feel like the second one just had a little bit more flair. And it was, it was a lot funnier and just a little bit more creative, I think. So, and which is nothing wrong with Lunar One. They just definitely, I think, improved on it in like almost every area. Still trying to remember why you got Lunar Two. Was it because you saw us playing Lunar One? You're like, I want to get Lunar, and you could only find Lunar Two. Uh, I remember being specifically at Toys R Us buying game, a little time capsule activity there for you. <laughs> and uh, they had the Lunar Two complete there. And I don't remember how much exactly it was at that point. Obviously, my mom was buying it for me, but somehow, by the grace of God, convinced her to get it for me. And it came with a necklace, like that Lucia from the game wears, and like the art book, and you know the whole the soundtrack, the whole nine yards. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I just remember knowing what Unar was because of you, and then I just saw that, and for whatever reason, my kid brain was like, "Yep, there it is." Don't you love those stories where you're like, I somehow convinced my parents to buy this game for me? Because the yeah. same thing happened. This <laughs> the same thing happened to me with Tales of Destiny Two. I remember I was at Valley Fair and we went to EB Games and I was just looking at the PS One games, and I see Tales of Destiny Two and I'm like, what? There's a sequel to Tales of Destiny. I need to get this. And I ran to my mom. I'm like, mom, the sequel to my ta- the, to my favorite game of all time is here is in that that game is store. Can I get it, please? And knowing the prices of those games, it was probably like 50-something bucks, and yet somehow I, I got it. Gosh. Nice. Yeah, dude. Like, my, my mom had to just been shaking her head with that one, because, like, all the games are, you know, whatever it was back then, say, 40 bucks, uh, and then, like, that one was definitely, like, 20 bucks more than every other one there. She's just like, leave it to this kid to freaking, <laughs> like, pick the one that's <laughs> the most expensive. Like, no, I'm gonna freak out if I can't get it. <laughs> And I remember I wore the necklace to school the next day and some kid roasted me for it and I was like bummed. <laughs> I was like, damn. I legitimately thought I was so sick with this like anime RPG necklace on. <laughs> Taylor uh, Campbell uh, Christian uh, jerks. Yeah. Dude, yeah, yeah, man. Tough streets. But but Connor, you're pretty badass with that. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> I'd rock that necklace now. <laughs> I think I think Taylor, you have that. It's That's like a big big plastic gold circle it looks hilarious you should you should have that necklace actually taylor so i think hold on i want to see what this looks like lunar two yeah just type in like lucia's necklace and that should it's very simple it's like a little gold oh thing. yeah okay and it the, yep. the the one that came in the complete box you know bless their hearts was very like uh like looked like you got it out of like a 50 cent machine not the sure. crappy 25 cent ones, but the real, you know, luxury 50 cent machines. We had mm. quarters in. This one had shading to it. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's move to the first topic for today. All right. If it would work, actually. Oh, nope. Oh, I'm messing up right now. Hey guys, messing up live. <laughs> you gotta give it. You gotta give me a little. Uh, you know. There you go. You got a little rust on there. You, know? you got to get the cobwebs Well, it's, everything's all brand new, all automated, so I don't have to do any editing, so it's all good. Uh, well, you know, right after screwing up, the thing you shouldn't say is, well, everything's way easier now, so. <laughs> like, you know, I thought you were going to say the opposite. <laughs> technically, technically, it is way easier, but I'm just I got all this new stuff going on, spinning <laughs> a lot of plates here. It's drastically easier. Sorry about the screw up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Enough. Uh, so, we both, it's, it's perfect timing because we both have you, Connor, and you, Taylor, on at the same time. Um, you guys have complete opposite tastes when it comes to JRPGs. Taylor is all, Tell me how. Taylor is into all the new ones and has a really rough time playing older ones. I'm, I'm, I mean, like, 
this going as back as uh, maybe some PS2, even, maybe even some PS3 games. It's hard for you to get back into. No, like what, Taylor, what do you think was uh, the like the latest game that came out that you were like, I can't do this? Not just because it was crappy, because it felt too like old and like antiquated. Like a, a a game that released, like a newer game that released that felt old. Uh, no, no, I mean, like, what was like the like a game that came out? It's like maybe it was like a PS2 game that's like the newest game that felt too old for you to play. Ah, it's, Sorry, let's I, see. It's hard to ask that. It's a weird wording, but uh. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think. Like, of... was it like a PS, were there any PS2 games that you played where you're like, this is like a piece of crap? There's got to be a couple, like. Uh, I mean, I don't know if this counts, but I was playing the um, the remaster of Final Fantasy X and X-2. I actually liked X, and then I played X-2. I was like, nope. Well, really? mainly because that game is, like, mission-based almost. It's not like... it's You're not, like, going on a journey. It's like you're going on a mission, and the zones are really small. Um, but for me, it, th like, that's... Usually the problem I have with older games is the really high encounter rate and not knowing where to go. Like, those are the two things I can't stand in old JRPGs. Yeah. Um, so, like, I can't tell you how many times I've tried to play, like, Final Fantasy VI, for example. I think I've tried, like, three or four times. And I always stop at, like, the same spot. I'm just, like, I get, I get bored. It's not fun. It's, it's not what I look for from JRPGs anymore, I guess. Yeah, for sure. And then... Connor, you're the exact opposite. It's hard for you to get into the newer JRPGs because they're so different. Um, what actually like bothers you from for these some of these JRPGs? Because I know you've tried some and you just couldn't get into them. Um, well, I think for one, uh, the simple fact is just that I'm not as plugged into like the current game scene. You know, like back then it was like uh, just because everyone was like I was really knew what games were coming out and what was hot and what was good and this one sucks and this one's good and you know sometimes i hear talk like that but it's like i have a lot of it's like not as much of a priority for me to be like in the news like cycle with it as much so i don't hear about like the new jrpgs coming out as much because they're not so mainstream you know and um so that's a big part of it but i guess just i had like my most favorite gaming experiences are those older games, like a lot of the time, and they had such like a impact on me, like, at like you know not just when I was young, but at like most of the stages of my life, like I had like really awesome like retro JRPG experiences. I think it's just I draw I draw more to it because I kind of know what I'm gonna get, and it's like a classic experience. And sometimes they stink, but sometimes they have this magic that can totally just hook you. And that's, I guess, what I'm chasing. So it's just harder to find that from newer games. Like Octopath got me, but that's because it was so much like paying homage to those games. You know, mm -hmm. it was like very much intended to recreate that experience. So that really resonated with me. So games that like really channel that on purpose, that are like games that are newer. Like I usually vibe with those pretty well. So but, this, um, nostalgia plays a big role into. Your... I I guess so. It's not like I'm trying to like. I guess sort of, yeah. And I guess this, like, I never got into the super, like, anime style that, like, a lot of JRPGs have, which I know sounds crazy to be into the genre, not be into, like, the super anime style, but, like, Trails of Cold Steel and some of the Tales stuff, like, more recently. It's just not the aesthetic I like as much. Like, I tend to lean towards, like, darker, like, grimmer, like, atmospheres when I'm, like, playing fantasy stuff. Mm -hmm. So. The one thing that I'm that I'm interested in is uh you not liking Final Fantasy VII remake as much. Uh, yeah, I think that's sort of me being it like a dinosaur. Like I don't think that's the game's fault necessarily, but it's uh, and I know it wasn't intended to be a recreation of the original FF7 experience, but it just felt like such a new and alien thing that I, I just uh, I don't know the. Like the nuts and bolts of the gameplay weren't as addictive to me as the original game was. Like I like battles and turn base and like materia and stuff and like learning all these button combos and like dodge and block and all the different like stances. I was like, I don't know, it's just like not a game I really. It didn't really just grab me at all. 
like when I was fair. fighting the guard scorpion, uh, like the first boss, you know, it was like a really epic boss fight. Like I realized that was like an awesome part, but it's just a. Uh, like it was throwing all these mechanics at me and he's using it as like a teachable moment to like, here's how you do this. Here's how to do that. And just, I don't know. It's kind of like when someone like is like, you got to play this board game with me and they're explaining all the rules and you like want to be into it. Like, God, this is like so much right now. I don't even, I don't even feel like learning. (laughs) Yeah, no, I know exactly what you mean. Yep. But Taylor, in your opinion, do you think Connor, Connor would love the remake story? Uh, certain moments of it, it, it gets, I mean, we're like a year out from when it released now or more, more than that, but, uh, the ghost stuff, I even struggled with that. Like I had to watch some spoiler t- chats to like really be okay with it. Cause I remember when I first ended the game, I was like, what the hell is this? This is not what I wanted. And they, they pull had, in. Yeah. I had a tough time with that scene. Like when that happened, like I was like, what the fuck is going on right now? Yeah, like the whole like ending sequence fight with Sephiroth and all the characters they bring in, and you're like, you why is this guy here? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. See, yeah. like that's annoying. It's okay, like, so see, yeah. I'm, like I feel like I'm just being lame and that I'm not having an open mind here, but it's just like that's, it's just not. I, I was kind of bummed too. I was hoping I that. Want. Yeah, I, trust me, I was right there with you. I was really hoping. There's a lot of stuff I did, and they're like, "Why did you show this now? Like, why didn't it? Why did you wait yeah. for the appropriate time?" Yeah, but, I, was super far ahead foreshadowing, where I was like, "You never had any inkling of this being the case," and like, there's like that wasn't revealed until later, like for a reason, you know. But okay, the, I, the, the, the whole thing, uh, Connor, is that it's a whole meta game. The game's very meta, uh-huh. and um, okay, it's. I don't really like. I want to say it, but at the same time, I don't want to say it. I'm gonna put a little spoiler, so you're gonna hear the dead uh, people listening. You're gonna hear the dead Final Fantasy Tactics character, this death sound. Um, this this get this remake is a uh... what? Yep. Yeah, it's it's really it it's weird. It's like a same time. They're like, what if it was like this? It's, it's kind sort of, of sort of like that. Kind so, of. so what it, it sounds very stupid, but at the same time it's like, well, actually this is pretty cool at the same time. It's it's weird like that. Yeah. I'm not going to go in, I, I'm not I'm not going to go in the depth because that's very spoilery, but it's just like Yeah, yeah. I don't know, there's just a little bit too much new shit for me. Like when I was having the motorcycle fight on the freeway with the guy Roach, like I told you about this Taylor. I was like, yeah. Who is this guy? Fuck this guy. I was like <laughs> I do not care about this guy. <laughs> it's like, but but I do have to say, like, I don't think the game is bad. I think it's just, it's more of like, it's not you, it's me kind of thing. But like, um, I did really, really love seeing like those environments reimagined and like breathe new mm. life. Like that was my favorite part of the game. Like there were so many visual parts. Where I was like, oh damn, I guess this is what like a residential street in like Midgar would have looked like. It like really brought the whole thing to life, which was super cool. And I think they did like a awesome job with that like i think the the city of midgar that they presented felt like so lived in and like super real like i was really impressed with it if you just see if you ever get to the part wall of wall market you'll be like wow i'll probably put like end up finishing it because like i did buy it but it's one of those things that i just like backburnered like i never made a conscious decision where i was like f- like i quit like i'm not gonna play it anymore it yeah just, i was just like after the roach thing i just saved and i was like <laughs> All right, I'm going to play Enter the Gungeon for 22 more hours. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, it's, I, I agree with... Uh, I, I kind of agree with what you're saying, though, Connor, because I think the the environments are definitely the best part, like, seeing how they reimagine them. And then there are, like, certain awesome. moments that, like, they they don't do it in a new way, but it's, it's seeing how they do certain moments um in the game and then there's moments that like happened off screen in the original and you get to like play it now which is kind of cool so yeah. it's it's not like perfect like yeah so i mean it's it's kind of a good trade-off it's certainly not a perfect remake or whatever you want to call it but i think the part what gets me excited is now going forward it feels like all bets are off kind of and they're just i mean they're going to go to the same locations and stuff but if i don't know what to expect right. which is kind of exciting well one thing that's like kind of a dose 
uh, to use our terminology, Taylor. Heck yeah. <laughs> that's just like kind of kind of a drag is that like even if I don't end up liking the next one and the one after that, like they're going to get my 60 bucks because I need to see what those places are going to look like. Like, mm. you know, what dude, I, mean? I can't wait to see gold saucer. I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or just like Cosmo Canyon, like the cave of the mm. gee, like underneath it. It's like, and if they start, if, if they were to start like taking some of that stuff out, like that would be a huge bummer, but I think they're too smart to do that. Yeah, I don't think they're going to take... I was actually surprised, because I in my one of my prediction videos after part one came out, I was like, oh, I think they're just going to get rid of Fort Condor. And then they did this... Um, they called it Intergrade. It was sort of like uh, a DLC scenario that takes place at, like sort of during and then after the end of the game where you play as Yuffie. And there's like a little... Fort Condor board game, mini game that you can play. And I'm like, wow, they like went all out. Like they are not skipping anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, now that I think about it, they really just add. They haven't really subtracted anything from. I mean, I, I didn't end up getting to the end of the the first one, but it. I don't remember there being anything that was just gone or anything, you know, super noticeable. Yeah. No. I mean, it. Uh, it, it I don't know. Like I. I I guess I thought there would be certain things that like were either too weird or like, oh man, what are, like what are they gonna do or how are they gonna like recreate this in like super high resolution and make it look real and not stupid? But they every single time they managed to do it. So even like um, you know um, Don Corneo's thugs, like the guy with like the spike, the black guy with like the yellow mohawk or whatever. Yeah, like when uh, you coke or Koch or whatever, however you say it. They those guys are like characters. They're not just like dudes right. no, I, so. I really appreciate stuff like that too. i really like that they like they take the character and like oh this is definitely what this guy would have like been like because like that's yeah. such a hilarious like character that dude like that dude with that hair like being like the bouncer of all the ladies of the night that don corny like it's just that's a great setup for a guy you know right and it's good to see them like take that and recognize they're like oh this character could like be hilarious yeah so Here's a question for you guys, all right? Or here's a, yeah, a question. Connor, what yeah. old game would be good for Taylor to try out? And Taylor, what do you think a more recent game that Connor would like? Mm. Um, hmm. So how, kind of almost pertaining to my uh, question earlier, Taylor, like how far back... Or, or or Nick, for that matter, how far back should I go? Like, what's too late for it to be considered an old game? I think um, Super Nintendo. Anything in the Super Nintendo, I'll just. I know I'm not going to play. So PS One, no, I, I think mean, I, I mean can still other... go. Uh oh. No, we lost the Connor. Or are you thinking like PS One classics, Nick? Oh, there he is. Um, I we lost you for a second there. So you said something about PS One classics. Oh, sorry about that. Um. Yeah, so are you thinking, should I suggest like a PS1 classic or maybe even like a PS2 game or PS, you know, later than that? Or just keep let's, it like old? Let's say PS2 or PS1. Okay. Hmm. And Taylor, you could do like Switch, 3DS, games like that. Mm. I think I'm going to have to... It's a game I've talked about ad nauseum in episodes past, if anyone remembers. But I'm going to have to say Radiata Stories. I mm. think you would really <laughs> like that game, Taylor. I think it yeah. holds up really well while still adhering to like a pretty classic JRPG like uh, format. So I think that would be a really great thing. Because I know you loved the concept of recruitment and Chrono Cross. And I, too, am... A like a massive fan of like the recruitment trope of JRPGs, like Sukaden, uh, Radiata Stories, Chrono Cross is like the the seminal one, and then uh, yeah, and every character is like packed with so much character. the The reason I uh, suggest it in particular is because you said you really loved FF9, and I think of a lot of the mm. things that made FF9 great are like present in Radiata Stories in like a very big way. Mm. And the yeah, I've, I've played it. I still have it. I just uh, that's it's the same thing like you with Seven Remake. I just stopped playing not because I didn't like it or whatever, but right. I just need to pick it back up and 
Keep well, going. One thing I would say about Radiata Stories, it's one of those games where it's very non-linear, and so you can go do a ton of stuff and like not do story things for a while, like a lot of it recruitment-based. And so there is definitely times where if you weren't like using referencing like a walkthrough or something where you'd be like you'd load your file and be like what the hell was i supposed to do again you know and like that's a classic way for a file to die is for you to just mm. load it up after like two weeks and then just be like i have no idea what i was supposed to be doing right now and so that could kind of happen sometimes with that game because it's so uh non-linear but... the bane of older games yeah, yeah, but I think it has everything else, and it doesn't have random battles, which I know you love. Mm. And the battle <laughs> system isn't turn-based; it's like a, but it's regimented in a way where it's not totally chaotic. It's like a very uh, purposeful, like meticulous, like sort of action RPG. And so, yeah, I love it. I know you would. Nice. Too. Do you remember how far you got into it? If mm. I may ask. I t- I don't remember like anything about that game. I I know like, I remember hours, like hours wise, maybe maybe like five ish hours, like gotcha. not super far. Yeah, I just remember loving that you could kick stuff in that game. I just thought that was so funny. <laughs> it, yeah, it never gets old, man. Every single person that you see, you can just start a fight with by kicking them repeatedly. It's fabulous. Love it. <laughs> every innkeeper to every I don't know NPC, dude. It's beautiful. Right, Taylor, did you think of a game? Uh, I got a couple. I, one of them you may have already played, and if you have, then I have a backup. But have you played um, Radiant Historia on 3DS? I actually own it, but uh, I think something happened with my DS, and uh, like some kind of chicanery led to me not finishing my file and getting some. Mm. Like I definitely liked it, but uh, it got swept aside somehow okay but i didn't get terribly far maybe like four or five hours somewhere to what you said mm, okay that game, um that game would... could that could be overwhelming it's really good it is a really good game it has that classic feel but it's a bunch of time travel well and i remember the story being like super heavy and like bleak which i like yes. i love that dude that's like my favorite that's like why chrono trigger is such a beloved game for me because it's like you're like in this happy fair and you're like oh we'll do the pie the soda drinking contest oh we'll do the blah blah blah. and then you like step through this portal and you get transported to the year 2300 and the world is just in ruins and everyone's like starving and like nuclear like bunkers i'm just like (laughs) on the super nintendo i was like whoa dude wild yeah it's like really bleak and so i don't know i like when games uh like wrestle with that kind of stuff well, I will say that. I mean, it, it, when you're listening to it, it comes out this week, but uh, Tales of Arise is actually pretty dark. Um, really? Yeah, know. there was like a couple moments where I was like, literally like, holy shit, like I can't believe a Tales game just did this. Yeah. Uh, and they show it. It's not like Berseria where they like censor it. They actually show stuff this time. Um, like people like gore or is that what you're referring to sort of i don't want to give it away because it like spoils something but yeah it's i guess you could call it gore (laughs) but it's 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 like intense i was it it was like one of those so you know like when it cuts to like a hand-drawn animated cutscene, like oh shit's about to go down you know and it cuts and it cuts in i'm like oh what's gonna happen here i was like oh fuck okay (laughs) (laughs) yeah so it was it was very dark i didn't expect it to go there so um yeah, I mean the 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 general premise of that game is like you're a slave and you're trying to like uh, free your planet. There's like this planet that's near your planet that's like enslaved you. So that's sort of the premise of this of of the game is you're just trying to liberate your planet. So you see a lot of like slavery and racism and stuff going on, but it's it's more adult and nuanced. So. Well, I have huge respect for like anybody who's doing a creative pursuit these days who's like not afraid to like contend with subjects like that, you know, because it's like it's very easy to just be like, ooh, that's like sketchy. I'll stay away. So like to have the courage to like talk about stuff like that is, you know, it's pretty cool. It's unique. Yeah, definitely. Can't wait. For bold it. direction for tales, I would say, in a good way. Can't that sounds wait. cool, man. Is that it's, it's going to be on PC? Yeah. They did yep. that? Okay, cool on pc ps4 and ps5 and if not you know nick could just rip it for me so it's not really a big deal <laughs> i can't do that 
<laughs> uh, let me figure it out. I'll give you a week. I'll, I'll write. I'll write a PS5 <laughs> emulator. Give you a PS5 there emulator. You yeah, there you go, man. Uh, and before uh, we proceed, Taylor, I was just curious. What is your level of experience with Chrono Cross? I don't recall. I beat it actually. You beat it. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Was yeah actually, it was uh, a. It was a bit of a grind, but I, I definitely beat it. I. I I was I think I was harsher on it than I should have been because I didn't realize that you could automatically run away from every battle because that was my one gripe. I'm like, there's just so many battles. And then like somebody on Twitter is like, you know, you can run away from literally every battle. Right. I'm like, oh, oops. Yeah, And there's not even a chance of failure. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you and it's not really like boss and heal up and try again. It's crazy. Like there's been times when I'll like set an, a trap element for a boss or whatever, you know, do make some kind of mistake and uh you just hit run away or you forget to allocate a certain element that you need. And you're like, Oh shoot. Instead of reloading my file, just run away, go to menu, reallocate. And then boom, it's like, great. It has but, the uh, best soundtrack of any game ever though. I'll say that for sure, man. It's, it's great. I'm just, I bring it up because uh, I've been playing it and it's really been striking me hard. Just how well it's aged in my opinion. It looks outstanding still, especially on the simulator. And I actually thought oh, there yeah. weren't very many battles. I almost feel like the NPCs are too like laughably easy to run around. Like I, I feel like in most dungeons I can almost I could like evade every single enemy, or usually you know, for the most part. But uh, but yeah, dude, I just can't yeah. put it down. So, anyways. Oh yeah, that's no, a good one. Y'all, and you have to beat Xeno Gears still. I do have to beat Xeno Gears. Oh, that's that's beating a dead horse, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and that is why I said it. Yep. Xeno Gears is not to be played without a walkthrough. While well, it pains me to say that, it is true. But the story, the story that needs to be told. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I played that on my Vita. So did I. Xeno Gears. Yeah. Actually, that's where I beat Chrono Cross. Actually, that was on my Vita. Now that I think about it. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, actually, yeah. sorry, what were you saying, Nick? I was like, yeah, I beat it. I remember, I just remember getting the second CD. I'm like, ah, it's it's gonna be this. It's it's time for the weirdness of the second CD of Xeno Gears. It just turns into a visual novel or whatever. It's well documented, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. At that point, I'm like so engaged in the story that I find it gripping. But I understand you know, someone who wasn't as into it would not feel that way. It was, just, it, yeah. It's like such a blatant change. Like what? Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's inter- but it's, it's also like a thing that I've like never really seen before. So it's like it's kind of is a curiosity in that regard. Mm-hmm. All right. So Would not that? recommend that to someone who only likes newer RPGs. <laughs> yeah. like, just don't waste your time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> just like go straight to Xeno Gears. That's what I always say. Well, that, that's why that game is hurting for a remake, dude. That story is so good, but I know it would probably get messed up. So. Definitely. <clears throat> All right, so let's do for a little quick news. Uh, there's a PlayStation event that's starting in about two days, or tomorrow if, when you first listen to this, when this first comes mm-hmm. out. Um, this is supposed to be the E3 event, pretty much. Uh, Taylor, what do you think is going to be shown JRPG wise, if anything? Uh, I, I really think the only thing that we, that could be there is Final Fantasy 16, because they did say third party partners and stuff. So I think Final Fantasy 16 could be there. It's been a long time. Uh, it was the last PlayStation event last year. I think it was like a year ago when they announced it. And then they're like, yeah, we'll have more to show in 2021 and they haven't shown anything. And so I feel like it's time for some more gameplay, maybe a release date. Um, but that's I. I'm trying to think of other like really big name JRPGs that would be worth showcasing there. And I unless that if there's something we don't know about, I think that's really it. Yeah. It's gonna be a I. In my humble opinion, I think it's gonna be a big waste of time for us JRPGers. Mm. I don't, unless you don't think 16 is gonna be there. No, I don't think so. I think mm. it's. I don't even think it's gonna be in Tokyo Game Show. But you know what is going to be at Tokyo Game Show, though, not to go too far off track, is uh, Project Triangle Strategy. Oh, the new, the new, the new Final Fantasy Tactics. 
you know about that game, by the way, Connor? Yeah, you downloaded the demo onto my Switch, and I probably oh, okay. went on to like not play my Switch for like nine months. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about mind you, but you know. <laughs> so, okay. Well, you want to talk about a uh, a newer game that's trying to do the old thing? Like it's made by the team that did Octopath Traveler, and it's basically Final Fantasy Tactics. So I feel like you would really love that game. So I'm probably goofing by not uh by not playing that, huh? Exactly. Awesome. You dumb goofed. I'll get on it, I promise. I wonder <laughs> how much is gonna change though from that demo. Because that was an early demo just giving us like a, a little hint of it. Yeah. So Yeah, I just remember Taylor speaking very, very highly of it. It it actually plays technically it plays more like um Tactics Ogre than Final Fantasy Tactics, but it, I mean it's got like a, that set that like HD pixel art look, um, yeah. but each character is like locked into a job. You can't like switch jobs. Um, but I mean, combat that, wise, it's really really cool. So that that we know of, that we know of, yeah. Well, a friend of the show, Casey Hollingsworth, would lose his mind if you if he heard you throwing around those tactics of your comparisons. So, uh, and I do love tactics of myself. I I beat that game and it was intensely awesome and intensely deep. But um, yeah, Good dude, I gotta play Triangle Strategy for sure. Interesting name, not not a great name if you ask me. But... No, I agree. I hope they change it. <laughs> uh, speaking of strategy games, I've been playing that Final Fantasy Tactics 1.3 mod. Oh yeah, and that game <laughs> is the most frustrating thing in the world. Yeah, dude, that game. Uh, I watched you play it for like a half hour, and I was just constantly like slapping my forehead, just like, "What is going on, dude?" So, Guy yeah. shot you with the crossbow, and then it exploded for a second, like damage. Yeah. So oh, what? <laughs> yeah. So you, you know, you know the first crossbow that you get called bowgun. So that fun? yeah yeah. So yeah. it has an ability called double shot, and sometimes it you know it triggers, and you shoot him, and then it hits you again. <laughs> It's like, ridiculous. Uh, and then, okay, right. bombs are the worst. Bombs could, like, do an AoE that's, like, as big as Bolt 4, and it does a huge, like, flame attack. And then when you attack them and you hit them in critical, and when they, you know, when they become critical, right, they do the little sad face. Mm -hmm. um, they decided to give them a, an ability which makes them get, CT quick, so it automatically makes them go on the turn. Go, you know, go next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Critical quick. Yeah, and you know what they do when they're that weak, right? They go yeah. boom. Yeah, yeah. So basically, when you get a, you have to kill a bomb without it getting critical, or else it automatically self destructs. Yes. That sucks Fun. so bad. <laughs> so had the idea to give critical quick to bombs is like such an asshole. <laughs> That's like so mean. <clears throat> so I fought a goblin, right? You know, goblins are really easy. So he has a ranged attack that's like three by three, right? That is a three time attack, which is just like, it's called a triple punch. And he just like spins around and punches. And for some reason it's ranged and it does like 50 damage at like level two. So it's three, three times disgusting. that. Yeah. Nick just sent me a picture of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> You've won the battle, and like everyone on the entire map is dead except for one of his guys. It's like in the wrong <laughs> corner. And he was like, "This is a common sight in this game." And I was like, "Damn, dude, that sounds like savage." It's so frustrating that I, I stopped playing it. I was like, "No, this is not for me. This is just crazy." Well, I feel uh, like that's like to play as an oddity, like for laughs with your friends who are like FFT veterans. Like me, me and Casey would have a lot of fun just plugging that in and being like, "What the fuck is this?" Exactly, that's what it's like. like. Why, did the, why did this knight just use fucking lightning stab on me? <laughs> so what happened there, uh, by the way, was the bomb thing. I had like four guys surrounding him because I wanted to kill him as fast as possible, and so I hit, hit, hit. So he could hit the most people as possible when he explodes. Yes. And luckily, my knight had full health, and he had like 160 health, right? So he survived, but everyone else died. And I was like, well, thank goodness this is the last oh, guy. Is. And even if you notice, Algus and Delita were also dead. <laughs> they, yeah. like, they just died instantly. Yeah, man. It's, it's, it's a cold one. I like those goblins. They're, uh, they're intense. Yeah, the fact the fact that people have modded Final Fantasy Tactics into so many different iterations is just awesome, dude. 
Yeah, it's, it. it's crazy. I've said it before and I'll say it again. It blows my mind that they've re-released Final Fantasy 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 as many times as they have, and they still haven't re-released Tactics. It's like, what the fuck, guys? They did, they did War of the Lions, so maybe they were like, that's the re-release. Yeah. No, but I mean, they put like you can play Final Fantasy IX on PS4. You know what I mean? Like that's what I'm talking yeah. about. Like they continue to re-release it, but like they just left they tactics just, in the dust. They should just port to everything. I don't get what they wouldn't. <laughs> we don't exactly. know. Exactly. We've been saying this for 150 episodes. Yeah. I guess I've just <laughs> never thought about it because I've just I've beaten Final Fantasy Tactics so many times that like what I. I might have finally got to a point where I can't play it anymore unless I play it in, like, wow. a, different, in a different wacky way. Like I told sure. you guys last time I played Tactics, I was like, okay, only mages. The entire squire side of the tree is out. Only like only the chemist side of the tree. And uh, I got all the way into the last chapter. Uh, all black mages, summoners, oracles, etc. Um because my my hack on that was I would have oracles with the poles, which is actually there are there do a lot of damage in combat. So it was like my secret way of having melee still. Um, but you know you have all these tricks to survive when you have all mages. But um, I finally got to the battle. It's a War of the Lions battle where you fight Algus in the Undercroft, like uh, in Milan, and he's like a zombie vampire, like dark knight guy and he has like a bunch of ultima demons with him yep. and that and he has reflect mail in that and you have to kill august and all of my damage is spells uh, and so I got to that and I was like, my only option is to like literally make every single person an oracle or uh what's it called in the in the remake mystic and just get yeah. all the poles and just poke them to death with big sticks i was like dude <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can do it, man. <laughs> that sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because the whole it's like the the only thing that's holding me back is it's like already a really hard battle. Like there's a bunch of Ultima demons just absolutely destroying you the whole time, and Algus himself is like a absolute powerhouse. So it's like already not an easy battle. But yeah, it's whatever. I had a good run. I got really, really, really <laughs> with the, only the chemist side of the job tree. Well, I did give you that. PSP with the Final Fantasy Tactics mod on it, so yeah. Uh, if you if you have if you have that, oh, true, yeah. But that's like the modded game, right? Yeah, it's modded, yeah. So it's yeah. like that's super fun. So that allowed me to just replay it normal because everything was different, so it felt fresh again, you know. So let's move back to that uh, PlayStation event. Yeah, sorry, I totally sidetracked us. Oh no, that's that's <laughs> perfect. I wanted to sidetrack us because I wanted to talk about Final Fantasy Tactics, man. Um, any reason? Any reason? Any to reason? Talk about it. <laughs> In my honest opinion, it's gonna show. They're gonna show, you know, generic third-person adventure game yeah, five yeah. times, guaranteed. And then we could. There's a slight chance. That we could get Blue Point's new game, which is a Legend of Dragoon remake. That would be amazing. Where'd you hear whisperings about that? There's always been <laughs> like, s- yeah. like silly rumors that they're remaking Legend of Dragoon. And Blue Point is the re- is Sony's remake machine. They just remade uh, Demon Souls. And okay. I could see them doing Legend of Dragoon. Damn. That would, that would be that would be awesome. Oh, Honestly, it. though, I think I think their next game up is uh, Metal Gear Solid, but I would rather, much rather have Legend of Dragoon. Like the first Metal Gear Solid? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, yes. <laughs> that would be sick. <laughs> See, that's the nice part about not being tapped into games and stuff is when I hear stuff like that, I'm like, I'm like oh, oh, my God. That would be yeah. awesome. You could see that, yeah. You could see that happening. It's a... Uh, Metal Gear Solid or Silent Hill or whatever. We just we just don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that'd be sick too. Um, I I still don't really. I mean, I, you know what? Another game that could be there. I I give I care this much about it, but that um that Final Fantasy Origin, that weird the Chaos one. I wonder if Connor's ever seen that. Oh, have you seen this, Connor? Final Fantasy Origin. Nope. So. The premise, it's kind of a cool premise, but it's executed in such a dumb way. The idea is that, like, they're remaking Final Fantasy 1, but, like, 
instead of it being like characters from Final Fantasy 1, it, it looks like modern dude bros. So it's like a big buff jacked white guy with like blonde hair. He looks like a military guy. And then there's like this buff black guy with like dreads. It's really weird. It's it's a very strange. Uh... I'm very confused. Yeah, it's here. Let me find, let me see if I can find a trailer. I'm gonna I'm gonna look this up here. Oh my god! Yeah, it is it is ridiculous. I just remember it's like oh what you're talking about. It's like oh this actually sounds cool. Then they showed it off and we're just like what? So what's the name? Yeah, of the here here check the chat. I just sent you a link. Oh sweet, dude. You can see that you can see the picture of the main character. Yeah, and they're not like in armor. He's wearing like a normal shirt and jeans. It's like, what is this? It's so which, weird. Which doesn't make sense because in the game they are wearing armor because their armor changes what depending on what you're equipped with. All right, I'm watching. Yeah, it just doesn't make any sense. And to be fair, it's not made by Square Enix. It's made by um, the guys that did um, Neo, Ninja Theory. So it's like a spinoff game, but. I mean, it's apparently it's fun. Like, apparently the gameplay is good, but like, the the man, characters. the character designs are just awful. They're just so bad. Well, it looks like God of War, like every other, like action RPG now. So that bums me out instantly. Yeah. That's like, oh, cool. You like do combos. You have like a weak attack and a strong attack. Oh, that's that's like so cool. Wow. Yeah, it's like if Devil May Cry was a Final Fantasy game, sort of. Oh yeah. Well, all the other Final Fantasies that were like that made me sad, so this probably this one probably would too. Yeah. But I think Final this game made everybody sad to be fair. <laughs> well, Final Fantasy Final Fantasy sixteen will definitely make Connor sad. It is what it is, dude. That's the way Final Fantasy's going now. I am amazed that Tales of had still stuck with their battle system roots. I love it, dude. Well it's more action based anyway, so I feel like that's much more suited for like the like the gaming kind of uh like the way things are now yeah but back in the day or back when it was first shown people thought it was going to be like an open world battle system they wouldn't go into like a battle uh, arena you know kind of thing they thought it's like you're on the main map and you're swinging your sword and run doing battles and i was like no if they do that then tails is definitely dead <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's not gonna happen 100 percent sure that this game that everyone thinks is totally different and it's not going to be like a tails game is going to be a tails game and it is like a Tales game. But it, as Corey and the Taylor, it has mature it has evolved in a good way. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> All right, I dig that. Okay. So By the way, dudes, I gotta use the restroom real quick. I'll be right back. No problem. Uh, so we could talk about the PlayStation event because I know Connor's not into the PlayStation event stuff. Care, yeah. Um yeah, I, I really don't think they're going to show much off. I think we said what the like, the main things they're going to show off. If they have like, cool things they're going to show off, those would be them. Mm -hmm. um, we maybe see, maybe we could see Dead Space Remake, because, you know, that's a thing mm -hmm. now. Um, but I think it's going to be a lot of third parties, but it's going to be, you know, we're going to see, you know, Tumblr game. Out of war. Again. Yeah, they're going to show the new God of War. They're going to show Gran Turismo. They're going to show maybe the Last of Us multiplayer or whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, you're right. I think you're right. I don't think there's too much to get excited about JRPG wise. So hey, we could be old... eating crow on our next episode. So you just don't know. I'd be happy to. That, yeah. that would be awesome. It'd just be like, oh, there's going to be Final Fantasy 16. That's probably it. But then if there's something else, because that's, that's the thing. I feel like whatever may show up, I think would be a surprise, like something we don't know about. So hoping that's the case. Yeah, I'm hoping to. But all the games that I hope are going to come be shown are not going to be shown until later on. I just know. Like, I want to see Final Fantasy Remake 2. I want to see Final Fantasy 16. I want to see the Persona, uh, you know, medieval game and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Project Re Fantasy. I forgot about that game. Yeah. So I want to see all that, but I don't think we are. I think we have the highest chance to see Silent Hill. You know, that Silent Hill game that they say it's going to be, it's a remake of the first one. Mm. And, and um, maybe some 
Resident Evil DLC. Oh yeah, yeah, maybe. I forgot about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But let's what move I... on. Let's move on to our last topic of the day. Oh snap! Is what do you think about using guides on games you haven't beaten? Mm. I know uh, there's a, a there's a, a lot of people. I think we've actually talked about this before, where I'm like, you can't use guides ever. Do you Until, still have that stance? No, I don't. <laughs> okay. So well, what what, what made me what made me think about this is uh, you actually Connor you were playing Chrono Cross right and you were you were using a guide and I was like what well, you haven't beaten the game yet but I understand why because you want to get you you've played this game so many you played this game and but you haven't beaten it yet but you just want to get all the cool stuff without you know needing to beat it multiple times so right right well um. I actually have kind of like a framework of rules on this kind of thing, but I'm interested to hear what you guys think about it first. Yeah, actually, I want to hear about Taylor's Taylor's thoughts on it. Yeah, I mean, um, I think it depends. Like, okay, so I'll say like for Chrono Cross, right? Or not Chrono Cross, Chrono Trigger, excuse me. Um, I used a guide only when I was like absolutely stuck and I didn't know where to go because in that game, there's a lot of like time hopping, like you have to go to different eras. And there were times where I was like, dude, forget this. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. I'm just gonna look up a guide real quick. Okay, I'm supposed to go here. So for like quick stuff like that, yeah. Or like if I'm trying to find like the ultimate weapon or like some secret thing and I just, when it gets to the point where you're frustrated or it becomes unfun, that's when I whip out a guide. Like, I don't just sit there with a guide open, like, looking at it or anything like that. It's only when I'm, like, I'm frustrated, basically. For sure. I dig that. That's more or less uh, the exact way I look at it when playing a game that I haven't... Um, it's, yeah, it's it's for when you get stuck, and it's for when your time is being wasted. If yeah. that makes yep. any sense. You know what I mean? Totally. And, like, because... Yep. Like you're already wasting time by video, like playing video games, you know. So it's like for it to be wasted exponentially by doing nothing in the video game you're supposed to be having fun playing. That seems right. like a massive. It's like a much more egregious waste of time than just playing a video game. Is to just be aimlessly trying to figure something out for like 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So you're just you're, you're like running around in the same area trying to figure out what to do, and yeah, it's like, okay, let's look at a guide. Cause exactly, guides are everywhere now. Well, it's like you're not using it. It's like if there's a part of the game where it's giving you like three different pieces of a text and you have to like put them in the right order. It's like and solve the puzzle. Like you better give it like four or five good like college tries before you look up the answer. You know, like if you're getting frustrated and you're just slamming your head on the wall, like look it up. Don't be like a psycho, but like. Don't just be like, oh, there's a puzzle. Let's let's see what this is real quick. Okay, sweet. There it is. Beep, 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 beep. You know, and it's like, that's a little bit lamer, you know? Like, if you haven't beaten the game before, I think you have to... If it's a good game, you, you sort of owe it to the game to kind of buy in. It's like, it's like playing Silent Hill and looking up the riddles on a guide. Exactly. Yeah. And when, when, when Silent Hill's riddles are like half the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I beat one and two, Silent Hill one and two, using just maps a couple times. Because there was times when I was like in the fog, and I was like, "Damn, I don't want to like run around these back streets, like looking for the." You know, so I just looked up like, a map once or twice. I think. That's like, where all where are all the healing items I could grab? Right and shit like that. And a lot of that is just to sort of like mitigate how much old games don't respect your time. Yes. The world's the world's changed since the nineties. Like they had they had the pad out- kind of streamline the experience. A yeah, little they, bit. they they had to pad out the time somehow, right? Because if you know every if you know everything in those games, you beat it in like two to three hours. Like Resident yeah, Evil Two. For sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which it is fun to just absolutely autopilot my way through that game and beat it four or five hours <laughs> tops. Yeah, <laughs> it's fun to yeah. do. It's still fun. You can do the same thing in the remake as well. Yeah, totally. God, the remake's ruled so hard. It was so good. God damn, dude. One of the, yeah, t- probably the sickest horror game I've ever played. And I know that's oh. a wild statement, but like, I can't think of having a more visceral reaction 
some of the parts in that game. Like in it was really fun watching you play it for the first time. <laughs> oh my god, dude. man! So fucking good, dude. It, yeah, uh, I like, think that's I remember... the best video game remake ever. Like, no question. It's, it's possible. Yeah. Well, I have to. Th I have to think hard about that. <laughs> but um, that's a great question. But yeah, dude. Like, after I fought William Birkin, like on the tram, I like had to save and like go to sleep. You know, because it was late as late as hell. Because I wanted to keep going and finish the game. I just remember like laying my head down and be like, all right, I have to sleep. And just like staring at the ceiling with my eyes, like absolutely like clockwork oranged open, just thinking about how hectic that fight was. Oh, man. Be good. So good. Man, I wish I wish I saw Connor's first reaction to that. <laughs> There's so many great moments where I was like, oh, oh, oh! <laughs> so fun. They made the store the store the store owner actually very serious and know like oh thank you babe yeah yeah <laughs> sorry about that babe I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to put you in an uncomfortable situation babe what are your pronouns <laughs> uh, <laughs> I did not expect you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to think of what would a nice guy say in 2020, you know? When they yeah, go. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. So I have the same thoughts as, for guides as you guys. It's only when you get stuck, it's perfect on these guides. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially for older games. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll throw my asterisk on that. And uh, it was kind of implied in the wording of the question you put there. But if you've beaten a game before in the past, I think you have every right to use a complete, like, streamlining guide. Like, I'm playing Chrono Cross, and I'm basically, like, dual screening, like, following this guide to get all the treasures and get through these dungeons as fast as possible. Because I'm playing this game for the music, the settings, and the story. And so I have no time for dungeons and trying to, you know, figure out what happens next. I'm like, like, do you remember the part in the game, Taylor, where you go on the Invincible, or rather, it's the other world, so it's the Zelbest, the ship, and it's a cruise ship with, like, the casino and yada yada. And yeah. You gotta go and get turned into a cat and blah blah blah. There's all this stuff you have to do to, like, you know... Oh, yeah. Expose Fargo as, like, cheating at the gambling and yada yada. And it's this, it's this whole part. And this guide I'm using just had, like, a ten-step guide of, like, go here, talk to this guy. Go here, talk to this guy. Go here, turn into a cat go to this room, grab this thing. And it turned what would have been like a 90 minute, like no guide experiences. Like I was done. And like I did every single thing and had the scene done within like 10 minutes. And I got the nice. full enjoyment of the entire experience. And I don't, it didn't feel like it was cheapened by the help of the guide at all. Cause it's all shit that I figured out without a guide at some point, you know? Yeah. And so it's like, I did the work, you know, like that's the crux of the whole thing. I feel like I'm rambling a lot, by the way. Oh, that was perfect. <laughs> That's what podcasts are perfect for. I guess. I just hope I'm not taking up too much time there. <laughs> no, no, I know what you mean. I, and the, to me, like to kind of go back to an earlier topic, that's kind of what I don't like about older games. It feels like they're wasting my time sometimes. So well, the older the game gets, the more justified you are in using it, like more frequently. Like the leniency grows and grows the farther back you go. You know. Like if you're playing That's a good like rule, old, I think. <laughs> Final Fantasy, like two, three, four, like the Ridge, like yeah. dude, don't like don't waste your time. Just have a guide open on your second screen. It's not a big deal. Just have the dungeon layout so you don't have to waste your time. Yeah. Yeah, and like 1993, no one had anything fucking better to do than explore every single tile. Of this ridiculous like four bit map, you know? It's like the world's changed a little bit. Let's get let's get the let's get to the meat. Let's get yeah. to the good part. Get the ball rolling. Yeah, most definitely. All right, so guys, one last question before we head out. What is your next JRPG adventure you're going to go on? Because we're all on one right now. And I'm not, not going to say Tales of Arise because it's just an obvious thing. Let me think. <laughs> I might have to explore that one, honestly. I might have to. I have to get yeah, it. I, I think you'll I think you'll like it. And I, for what it's worth, I'm playing it on PS4 and it runs pretty well. Because I know everybody's like, I'll just wait till I get a PS5 and like, it runs pretty good on PS4. So 
I mean, these days, if a game is on PC, I'll just get it on there. And just oh, play, that's right, PC. Play, yeah, play, then play, you have no the, problem. Play it with the PS4 controller. Like, it's I don't know. I've been doing that's that. An even better that's an even better option. That's an even better option. For sure, man. No, it sounds fun. Uh, you'll have to stream it for me sometime. For sure. Um, I don't know. So there's a couple. I don't think Nick would count this, but I sort of fell down the rabbit hole again with Genshin Impact, but that's not really a JRPG, right? Would you say that's not really a JRPG, Nick? I would say it's not really a JRPG, but it's, it's a, a Zelda-like clone, so I'll allow you to say it. Okay. So if if not that actually there's a there's a game coming out later this year called Blue Reflection Second Light and I never played the first Blue Reflection so I'm thinking of playing that um, just to kind of get ready even though I don't think they're connected at all but it looks kind of cool so I think yeah. I might try that. There's a really sick Doom band called Blackwater Holy Light and it really really reminded me. Ooh, and nice. <laughs> here, here, and all there. That yeah, that that game that Taylor just said is super anime. You know, oh Connor would hate it. Yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely not. Definitely not a Connor game. Well, it's I mean, like I a bunch heard... of high school girls be turning. You're, it's like Sailor Moon, the JRPG, basically. Okay, yeah, that does sound like it. It sucks because it's like on the on the anime spectrum. That's like when the the meters are. It's like warning, yeah. warning, like extreme levels of anime. But like yeah. I like stuff that's like in the middle of the spectrum, you know. And it's not a hard rule, like, but it's just that's how I tend to be. Like, there's some, like a lot of like uh very anime style stuff that I really do like. Like, uh, I mean, Nino Kuni is like one of my favorite games ever. It's like pretty much mm. Ghibli film. Yeah. Although exactly. I guess Ghibli is kind of off to the side. It's not technically probably like. Anime. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's got its like, own style. But anime has the connotation of like you know the kawaii like schoolgirl outfit kind of thing more so. Sure, than, like, sure. <laughs> uh, I mean, not to like you know play on a stereotype, but that's what it seems like to me from the outside. Oh no, it's definitely that's, there. That's it's, 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 defi fair. it's definitely there, Connor. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> they, sure, man. A lot, a lot of JRPGs have uh, fallen into that. They, they, they're not. They might not be like focused on that, but it's definitely in there. You know. Yeah, yeah. And I have the swimsuit costume DLC. Yeah, there you go. Oh, boy. That's, <laughs> that's got to be there. 35 bucks well spent. <laughs> yeah, just put it on my tab. You know what? That's probably how much it's going to be. Hilarious. Um, I, I've, been, I've been thinking hard, man. And uh, my answer is probably going to be another like PS1 RPG, but just for the simple fact that you just gave me this great emulator and it's jam packed full of like awesome things. and so you've kind of you're really enabling me in my way um so I'll, i'm thinking of doing breath of fire three or four again because mm -hmm. i vowed nice. to finish three and i got really really far and i was doing great and to bring this up again on this podcast when my <laughs> vita got stolen on tour like it's it destroyed so many files that I had going, and it's really a darn tragedy. I wish there was some kind of cloud storage or something for those files. If there is, then I didn't have. It, but all right, mm. that file. But Breath of Fire is a, like a really fun series, but I've never actually beaten any of them. So I think I'm finally gonna change that. Breath of Fire three so far is my favorite. Four is also good too. We shall see. Oh yeah. Yep. Four's got a really cool look. I love how four looks. Yeah, no, it's they, they did a really cool job with that one. Um, I'm looking forward. Yeah, to... I gotta finish Chrono Cross first, of course. But yeah, I'm looking forward to playing those again, or not again, playing those for the first time. I have I've had them for so long. Excuse me, and I've never like tried them at all. So three definitely has a lot of nostalgia for me because it's a game I like, rented from Blockbuster and got pretty far in before having to return it. Which is a phenomenon no one ever brings up. Truly tragic for early JRPG fans. I don't. Um, I don't think I've ever run into that because whenever we re whenever we rented stuff, it was always like Distrega or MechWarrior Two or you know hmm. games like that. I guess that was just you because I guess you guys probably owned those. Hear about them at school or whatever, and be like, "Oh, sweet, I gotta rent that." I'd get like you know twelve hours into it, and you gotta bring it back. And be wait, wait. I did rent Vandal Hearts 1. I remember that specifically. No way. So, no. that was a rated M game by the way, just because of the blurred spl the blood splurt. 
Was that a Bradley video? <laughs> uh, yeah. No, not Bradley. Bradley not Bradley. No. no. It was Video Maniacs. Uh, and video now... <laughs> Maniacs. Holy shit, dude. Absolute blast from the past. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a, that was a way. I remember I that's where I rented Distrega and all the classics. Wow. Distrega. That was a good that game. That game is kind of fun, honestly. Yeah, it is. It's just like it didn't it was uh really good and it shouldn't have been that good. You know, one game uh I got really far in and then I had to bring it on or bring it home. It's not JRPG, but JRPG adjacent was uh Air Guys. Oh, you actually oh, rented yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, I rented that when I was a kid. And I remember I got really cuz it's like the fighting game with FF7 characters inexplicably. But then there's also like a dungeon crawler kind of like loot collecting like almost roguelike kind of uh, really i don't remember that that's cool huh and it's it was actually really fun i remember getting super into it when i was uh younger and uh yeah i bought the game at level up the best uh vintage game trading store i've ever been to in santa cruz and uh it's really fun yeah shit. i would like play it i could put like 10 hours in it uh, I just remember nice. I remember a renting adventure that we had at your house, Connor. When we when I first brought over the PS2, we rented a couple of games, and one of them was the Bouncer. Do you remember that? I do remember that. I remember being. Uh, I remember the hype was very high, so I think that probably reduced how stoked we were because it was kind of a uh, we were nonplussed. Yeah, it wasn't that we good. Like, oh, we were like, oh, it's like cool, I guess. But it was hailed by PSM as like the sickest thing that has ever happened yep <laughs> because it was like the first it was a it was a launch ps2 game right right exactly. i think so yeah, yeah. well no, i think everyone was just uh everyone was just flipping out about the graphics really yeah 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 everyone's like oh the guy kind of looks like squall <laughs> right yeah exactly like nope no relation not at all Scion, all right that's the guy's name i somehow remember for some wow time. how, how that's did some, you yeah. that's some good knowledge yeah. how <laughs> did you remember that I, I that was I that was like me saying Jay Cocoon from an adventure of on the back of the box. Oh, oh dude, yeah. yeah, dude, that was still that was like, oh man, absolute half court three pointer game winner when you said that. Zion, okay, here, Connor, just for fun. Wow, they really like. I'm looking at these other characters. They really were just like, let's pluck some Final Fantasy nine characters or eight characters, like. One of them looks like Renoa, one of them looks like Zell, one of them looks yeah. like Laguna. It's really funny. But anyway, do you For remember sure. any of the other character names? I just want to see how deep your uh, knowledge goes. This is like a wild stab in the dark. Is the blonde haired guy named Vol? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's awesome. Uh, this is truly like spectrum behavior. And we only played it. At when you rented it, right? That was the only time you played yeah, it. Yeah, well, I think the only other reason I might remember it is because it was in a PSM that I read. But if if I did read it, it was only like, and the, I don't, I remember nothing about the third character, so I can't help you there. Mm. Yeah. No. Yeah, uh -oh. I don't know, man. I don't know how I do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it shows other characters. I don't know if right. any which of these are playable, but there's a character. There's a girl named. Chaldea. There's a guy named Ko. There's a guy named Dur Duragon. It's not Dragon. Yeah, Duragon. I don't know. But Dur Duragon. Something like that. Yeah. Dargan. <laughs> Dargan. Dargan. Uh, yeah, dude. Do nothing for that's, me. That's uh, some good knowledge. It just upsets me that like those two little slots in my brain could have been something that was like fucking useful, but it's instead it's that. Uh, <laughs> My hard drive is just full of just dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can tell you how many JP it costs to learn Ramu, but I don't know how to do my taxes. Yes, who knows how? To, nobody knows how to do their taxes. Uh, yeah, that's a bad example. But you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, all yeah. right, it was fun having you guys back on for the, especially you, Connor. Miss having your energy on the podcast. Yeah, not you so much, Taylor. Yeah, I suck. Well, <laughs> forget it. Taylor, Taylor's always on. Taylor's yeah, yeah, always. Yeah. I, know, I know what you. Meant. I said it. <laughs> had to do it to him one time. Yeah. But thanks, man. It's been really nice to be on. I had a good time. Yeah. I was a little tight at the beginning, but hopefully people got past that. 
<laughs> it's... I was like, damn, this is being recorded. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So uh, if you uh, oh. hopefully we'll have you on again, Connor. Um, we are back, and we should be weekly. And next week we'll be talking about Tales of Arise and the PlayStation event. So look forward to that. Until me meantime, until then, <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs> Stuck the landing. Yep. Later. <laughs> Later. Later. <laughs>